الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله على افضل خلق الله على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد بن عبد الله وآله وصحبه ومن ولا الحمد لله إن الله سبحانه وتعالى أنزل كتابه وجعله تبيانا لكل شيء وهدى للعالمين وأمر عباده أن يتلوه وأن يتدبروه وأن يفهموه الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى revealed his book he taught it to his creation علم القرآن خرق الإنسان علمه البيان the Quran precedes the creation of the human being and then the human being is a human being because of his reason or her reason, the ability to actually think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the very outset of his Quran tells us and really gives us the fundamental foundation of our existence. When he says to the angels, with qala, I'm going to place in the earth a khalifa. And the khalifa is somebody who stands in place of another. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the human being on the planet and put him as a steward, a vicegerent, somebody who's there to maintain the creation. And Raghib, he says that there are three fundamental purposes. The first one is obviously ibadah, ma kharaqtu jinsa wa inna illa li'abudun. And then the second one is isti'mar. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, ansha'akum fiha, wa sta'marakum, ansha'akum wa sta'marakum fiha. He created you and then he put you in the earth to do umran, to actually cultivate civilization, all those things that make us human as opposed to the animals. The animals have their uh, hunting, they hunt for their food, they store food, they build, some of them uh, build extraordinary houses like the Beit al-Ankabut, the house of the, the spider, the, the, the ant hill, which is an amazing kingdom. But the human being is unique amongst the creatures. There's, nothing, there's no other creature on this planet like us. And, and in that way, Allah has differentiated us from the human beings, from the uh, animals. So this is important to remember. People now, they say, oh, we're just animals. There aren't any animals that are discussing uh, Cantor's theories on actual infinities. There aren't any animals that are uh, traveling in the earth to explore the previous civilizations. Animals don't do these things. This is what human beings do. There's no animal stupid enough to climb Mount Everest. So human beings do stupid things as well. You know, the, the native peoples there never uh, climbed Mount Everest until they got paid money to go up with the Europeans. And somebody asked the first man, you know, why'd you do that? He said, because it was there. Ridiculous. I mean, there's even not even oxygen up there. It was an indication that human beings aren't meant to go up. They're meant to be in awe of it, to look at it and be in awe. Like the ocean, you know, in West Africa, the... The West Africans traditionally did not swim in the ocean. Mauritanians would never swim in the ocean. They, they would think that you were insane because the ocean is there to be in awe of. So they would go fish on a boat, but to go swim in the ocean, they would say, no, that's for, like the, the ocean that they swim in is the ocean of knowledge. Like the poet who said, al-ilmu bahrun. That knowledge is an ocean. And those who dive into that ocean will find pearls and coral and wondrous things. But it's not safe from its predators. And you won't find in every wave a dolphin. The Arabs... Love the dolphin, dolphin, uh, in, in uh, Mukhtar Siha. Al-Razi says, Duchas, 
ويقال له الدولفين and he says دابة بحرية تنجي الغريق that it will save you تمكنه من ظاهرها it will save a drowning man by putting it on its back and taking it to safety so the 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 dolphin was an honored animal. So Allah, at the outset of his book, he says, إِنِّي جَعِلُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً قَالَ تَجَعْلُوا فِيهِ مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيُسْفِكُ الدِّمَا Are you going to put in it مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيُسْفِكُ الدِّمَا وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ Are you going to put in the earth one who sows corruption and sheds blood? Some say that this was Al-Hin bin the people that were here before the... Uh, the humans, and they were sowing corruption. So they were, are you going to give another group free will and let them uh, sow corruption? And we are praising you. We're here praising you. We, we glorify you with praise and, and we maintain your transcendence, your holiness. Allah says, This is the first uh, important note. Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. I know what you do not know. I know what you do not know. And then he says, Wa'allama Adam al asma'a kullaha. Who he taught Adam all of the names. Thumma aradahum ala al mala'ika. Faqara anbiuni ba asma'a ha'ula in kuntum sadiqeen. Tell me the names of these things. Tell me the names of these things if you're telling the truth. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana. Look how many times that the knowledge in, this, in these ayahs, these few ayahs at the outset of the Quran, how many times knowledge is in these verses? We, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He taught Adam the names. Fakhruddin al Razi said, He gave him the ability to abstract the universal from the particular. He could see the one in the many. He could see all animals in the one animal. He could see all camels in the one camel. He could see all dogs in the one dog. He could see all birds in the one bird. Because he is muwahid. He's the one that makes everything one, including his Lord. So Adam is given this knowledge, and then the angels say, we don't have any knowledge except what you taught us. Then he told Adam, tell them. Tell them the names that I taught you. And then he, t- he told them and they said, you, you have the knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them, didn't I tell you? Uh, didn't I tell you I know again a'lamu. just look at all the ilm there so this deen the essence of this religion is knowledge this essence of the religion it's knowledge the Prophet ﷺ said Inna I was sent only as a teacher I was sent only as a teacher he came into the masjid in a hadith that's related and there were two circles. One was doing tasbih and tadkir, and another was studying the Qur'an. He sat with the ones they were studying. He sat with the ones studying. The Prophet ﷺ said, الدنيا ملعونة وملعون فيها إلا ذكر الله وما والاه وعالم أو متعلم. This whole world is essentially worthless except for two things. The remembrance of Allah and what supports that remembrance and Imam Nawawi says ta'atuhu, it's his obedience, the obedience to Allah. The remembrance of Allah and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he says wa'aliman o muta'alliman a scholar or a learned person and a student. A, a scholar and a student. So he put these two things together dhikrullah wa'aliman o muta'alliman. Now majaris al dhikr According to the, you know, the, there's a hadith. If you, if you pass by, if you pass by the gardens of, uh, of paradise, take some repose in them. And they asked him what they were. And he said, 
they are the circles of dhikr. All of the early salaf said those were the circles of halal and haram. Learning your deen. Learning your deen. Those were the circles that the Prophet ﷺ said in. إِنَّمَا بُعِتُمْ وَعَلِّمًا He's a mudhakkir. وَذَكِّرْ فِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind people to remember God. The Prophet ﷺ told us to remember God. كَانَ يَذْكُرُ اللَّهِ فِي كُلِّ أَحْيَانِهِ He remembered Allah in all his states. So dhikr is important. But what is dhikr? Dhikr is the remembrance of your Lord. It's the remembrance of your Lord. And the way that you best remember your Lord is with knowledge of your Lord. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that فضل العالم على العابد كفضل القمر ليلة البدر على سائر الكواكب The preference of a scholar over over a devotee somebody who's doing dhikr and prayers and things like this is like the preference of the light of the moon in relation to the other lights on a full moon night. In another riwayah he said كفضل على أدناكم like the preference of me over the least of you. That's the preference. Inna faqihan wahidan ashaddu ala shaitan min alfi abid. One faqih, somebody who really understands this religion, is more ferocious, is more fierce against shaitan than a thousand devotees. Ibn al Jawzi in his book Sayyid al Khatar, he says, min, min, min. Min, min, uh, he had the shaitan from, from the machinations of shaitan أنه شغل الناس بالعبادة عن التعلم He preoccupied people with devotion over study He says that's one of shaitan's goals to preoccupy people with devotion over study The central Spiritual practice of this religion, the central spiritual practice of this religion is prayer. As-salatu fi awqatiha. That's the Prophet said the best of action. Prayer in its time. Imadu deen. Coming to the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ said, I fear two things for you. And then he said in another riwayah, same thing, Ibn Abdul Bar relates this in his book on knowledge. Fadr al-ilm. He says, Halaku ummati. The destruction of my ummah is with the book and with milk. Amazing hadith. They didn't understand what he meant. Oh, what book? He said, People learn the Quran and then they interpret it in ways that were not intended. And look at all the people today doing this. Look at all the people. You know, somebody the other day said to me, don't we need to reinterpret the Qur'an? And I said, well, that's like saying that the Prophet and the first three generations that he prays didn't understand it. Because we were told that they were the best of all generations and that we should take our religion from the Salaf. That's what we were told. And then the Prophet warned us about changing his religion. And he said, at the end of time, people will change his religion. They said he would, he told us that they will change his religion, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said that those who rectify my deen, man ahya sunnati ba'dama afsadaha nas, those who rectify my sunnah, give life back to my sunnah after people have caused it to die. These people have an immense maqam. In the same book, Ibn Adbar says that whoever من, من, من طلب العلم ليحيى به الإسلام ومات ليس, ليست بينه وبين النبيين إلى درجة He said anyone who sets out to learn this religion in order to bring life to it What did Imam al-Ghazali call his book? إحياء علوم الدين Bringing life back to this religion Because it dies It dies the Prophet ﷺ said, Quran yakhluqu kama yakhluqu thawbu ahadikum ala dhaharihi. This Quran will be worn out like a worn out robe on people's backs. People hear it and they, it doesn't mean anything to them anymore. They hear a taqullah. 
have taqwa and they don't respond. This is the human condition. So how do we revive the hearts? Jadidu imanukum. Renew your faith. And that's why if you're seeking knowledge, you have to be serious. One of them said, if, if you think you can gain knowledge, you will not be able to gain knowledge without great effort until the crow goes gray. In other words, it's not going to happen. Knowledge is difficult. Ibn al-Jawzi says the most difficult thing on the nafs is memorizing knowledge. Just sitting and doing repetition. It's not easy. If you want to learn Arabic, Arabic's not going to come easy to you. Arabic is a difficult language and it was meant to be difficult. It was meant to be difficult, but it's easy for the one who makes it easy. If Allah makes it easy, it'll come to you. But it's a difficult language. If you go to it thinking that it's going to come easy to you, you're not going to get it. But if you go knowing that this is difficult, but I'm going to give everything that I have to learn this language of God, Allah will make it easy for you. He'll give you openings. You'll see things that maybe even people before you didn't see. The Arabic is the key. The muhaddithun, uh, even, even some of the great muhaddithun. You know, uh, Sufyan al-Thawri, he went uh, to study hadith, and when he was reading, he made a grammatical mistake, and the man said, no, 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 you're, you're putting, basically in Arabic, he said, you're putting the, the cart before the horse. He said, you need to learn grammar. al he said, May Allah forgive us, because I know I've, made, I've done this, so may Allah forgive us. I would be fearful of somebody who makes a grammatical mistake in a hadith that they would fall under the, the category that the Prophet said, whoever lies about me, let him take his seat in hell. Because Al-Asma'i said the Prophet never made grammatical mistakes. He never made grammatical mistakes. Grammar. This is our religion. Learning language so that we can understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's revelation to us. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He put us on the earth to know these things. He put us on the earth to know our Lord, to know that we're creatures. And with true knowledge, you will arrive at knowledge of God. It's, it's, it's inevitable. It's false knowledge that will lead you away from knowing that you're a creature that has createdness, that you have a khadiq, that you have a raziq. Where did your provision come from? Where did all these foods come from? Where did all these vegetables and fruits come from? Where did the milk in the udders of these animals come from? This is all spontaneous, came out of nothing. Nobody in the pre-modern world would have ever accepted that. With rare exception of people that Iblis obviously led astray. So he says, this is what even Josie says. He says he will preoccupy you with devotional practices so that you will not learn. And then what does he do to the ulama? Because he'll come to the ulama as well. This doesn't, just learning doesn't get you out of this problem. He'll come to the ulama and he'll say, oh, knowledge is enough. That's all you need. And he will preoccupy them from doing actions with their knowledge. One of the, my teachers told me, don't ever read something, at least you do it one time. Just once. If you read something in the hadith that tells you it's a practice of the Prophet, just do it one time. So that at least you did the imtithal for that one time. Because you can't take on the whole practice. This is impossible. The Prophet was, he was a human being, but he had supernatural powers. He could see, he saw 12 stars in Thuraya. You can only see eight if you have really good eyesight. They're called the seven sisters. He saw 12 according to uh, the hadith. If you look, just Google it and you can see Thuraya, a close-up shot of it. Count the, the big stars in it, there's 12. So the Prophet ﷺ saw 12 stars in Thuraya. The best eyesight sees eight. He had the vision. He never went out to sight the moon. Did you know that? He never went out because he would see it like a telescope. 
before anybody. There's no hadith. Somebody actually said, oh, this is a proof that you should use calculations. Because the Prophet said, there's no hadith that said he went out with the Sahaba to sight the moon. No, because he would have seen it before you could see it with a, with a, a human eye. Because he had, so he saw it behind him. A man was imitating, because he had a very, uh, uh, he didn't walk like the other Arabs. He walked in a very determined way. And, 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 and so there was a man mocking him behind his back. But he could see what he was doing. He turned around, he said, Kun kadalik. He said, okay, be like that. And he, he walked like that. Because whenever you, people that mimic people always exaggerate. They, they do more than that. They, that's what makes it funny. You know, like if you hear somebody imitate a person's voice, they never imitate exactly like them. They take their idiosyncrasies and they draw it out. And that's what makes it funny. So he was exaggerating the walk. And the Prophet said, all right, be like that. And that's the way he was for the rest of his life. He walked like that. Ibn Mas'ud said, Wallahi, law sakhittu min kalbin khashitu an uhawwal kalba. If I mocked a dog, I would be afraid that God would turn me into a dog. And speaking of being turned into dogs, one of the miracles of our Prophet, people are wondering where the furries came from. Right? The Prophet said, the end of time will not come until you will see people turned into animals. But he said, but the rahmah of my community will not be physically turned into animals. They will become animals internally. So they will feel like they're dogs. They will feel like they're cats. They'll feel like they're wolves. They'll howl like a wolf. That's a hadith. And now look, we're seeing all these miracles. Where are you guys? Are you seeing what we're seeing? The Prophet said the end of time won't come until people will be content with same sex. He said this, he told it. Look at this spreading all over the world, raising these, these flags of conquest. That's what, a, when you raise a flag, you're saying we won. And the Prophet told us this. And they lied to them. They lied to these young people. According to the World Health Organization, by today's statistic, one out of six people, they call them MSMs, men who have sex with men, will get AIDS. One out of six. Have you ever thrown a dice? Throw a dice. Keep throwing it. See how many times one in six come up. Those aren't good odds. One out of six. How could you promote that? How could you promote that lifestyle? People that have to take drugs, they're trying to, the, the immune system is their enemy. That's why they're trying to hack the immune system, make, give them uh, vaccines to prevent STDs that you won't get. But there, there's not just sexually transmitted diseases, there's spiritually transmitted diseases. What about all the spiritual destruction that these activities, promiscuity, whether it's heterosexual or homosexual, what happens to you? So why are we protected? Because Allah gave us knowledge. Allah gave us knowledge. لا تقربوا زينة لا تقربوا زينة نو كانت فاحشة وساء السبيلة It's a foul thing. And it leads to a terrible end. Unwin said in studying 86 civilizations that whenever sexuality was unleashed on a people within three generations, they lost faith, family, and rationality. We're in the third generation in this country now. It was unleashed in the 1960s. We're in the third generation. So you're wondering why everybody's going crazy, why people are, don't know what a woman is anymore. These are the results of your actions. But we're the people, we're supposed to be guiding people. But if you want to guide people, you have to, you have to know the guidance. You know, the Arabs, they say, If you don't have something, you can't give it. The Muslims have lost this guidance. Where, where, where's the guide? They're all fighting one another. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَا ضَلَّ قَوْمٌ بَعْدَ هُدًا كَانُوا عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا أُوتُ الْجَدَلِ no people go astray. After guidance they were given, except that it's replaced with argumentation. We have all these, these so-called Muslim leaders and scholars, they're all fighting each other on Twitter, attacking one another. People are losing their faith. People are losing their faith. What are you doing? Where are you? What are you thinking? 
I'm, this, it's insane. It's just amazing. We, we were given this guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we just throw it away. The Prophet didn't argue. Imam Malik was once in a group and they started arguing. He got up and he literally took his rida and he shook it like he was shaking them off. And he said, Antum harb. And he walked away. A man came to him, radiallahu anhu, and he said, Ya Aba Abdillah, nadirni, you know, let's debate. And he said, And if I win you, he said, then you follow me. He said, وَإِذَا غَرَبْتُكَ أَتْبَعُكَ He said, وَإِذَا جَاءَ ثَارِثٌ وَيَغْلِبُنَا نَتْبَعُهُ Malik said, you're going to be on a new... He said, if, if, I win, if you win what? He said, then you follow me. He said, and if I win what? He said, I'll follow you. He said, what if a third one comes and he beats both of us? He said, then we follow him. He said, you're going to be on a new religion every day. You'll be on a new religion every day. Malik knew he had the guidance. He knew what... What he was on. And we know. This is the guidance we were given. We have the guidance. We know what the deen is. We know what the deen is. I know what the religion is. We know what the deen is. But are you going to study it? Are you going to learn it for yourself? Not so that you're just like a parent. You know, the Arabs called Babagha, the parrot, you know, Babagha'i. The Prophet said, لا تكونوا إمعتن. Don't be a yes man. Ma'ak, ma'ak. I'm with you, I'm with you. Don't be, he said, لا تكونوا إمعتن. Don't be a yes man. وَطِّنُوا أَنفُسُكُمْ إِنَ أَحْسَنَ نَاسَ أَحْسَنْتُمْ وَإِذَا أَسَأَ النَّاسِ سَنَمْتُمْ مِنْ إِسَأَتِهِمْ No, strengthen, make firm yourself so that if people do good, you're with them and when they do bad, you're not with them. Don't follow the crowd. If you read the Qur'an from cover to cover, show me one rightly guided group in the Qur'an other than the Sahaba. One rightly guided group. The entire Qur'an are case studies of one man, two men sometimes, Harun and Musa, going up against a mob. Don't be with the group. The Prophet said, be with the group as long as they're rightly guided. And then when it goes astray, he told Hudayfa, just be with yourself. He said, if the Dajjal shows up, ana hajijukum. If the Dajjal shows up and I'm alive, I'll take care of him. I'll protect you. But if I'm gone and he shows up, kullu muslimin hajiju nafsihi. Every Muslim will be his own. He'll be his own proof. So you better recognize the Dajjal when you see him because we're in an age of Dajjajila. The Prophet ﷺ told us knowledge would go. It doesn't go, it doesn't get lifted up one night. He said it will go with people dying who had the knowledge because there weren't young people that were there to take it from them. The Prophet ﷺ said that the, the waratha of the, of the Prophets is knowledge. They don't leave gold and silver. Aisha came out with all the possessions of the Prophet ﷺ to show his ummah. This is what he left. This is what he left. And it was a few izars, a shirt, a bowl to wash through his wudu. That's what he left. He didn't have dunya. He said, I fear for you, leban, milk. Why did he use milk? It's an amazing analogy for the dunya, if you think about it. Because milk is the, is, is the superfood. You know, the, for the Arabs, milk was everything. If they had milk, they didn't eat anything else. And I lived with Bedouins. I know how true that is. So that's, that's really what dunya is. It's, it begins with milk. That's where it begins. It begins with milk. And the dunya, like Imam uh, al-Busiri says, is like a big breast. And people need to be weaned from it. Wean yourselves before death weans you. So that's what the Prophet was talking about. Be weaned from this dunya. Because you are going to be weaned from it when death descends. And it's not easy. So these are, these are the days. And the, one of the uh, Harith al-Awar was in the masjid. And this is in Kufa, in Iraq. And he saw the people, they started arguing. It was like fitna in the masjid. He went to Sayyidina Ali. 
He was the Khalifa at the time. He went to Sayyidina Ali and he told him what was happening in the masjid. And he said, oh, fa'alu dharika? Did, were they doing that? He said, no. He said, Wallahi sama'atu min Rasulillah. I heard from the Messenger of Allah. Satukunu fitanum. Fitanum. Muslim. There will be conflicts in this ummah like portions of a dark black night. And then I said to him, and this is the genius of the Sahaba. They're always concerned. They don't, they're not concerned about the fitan. Like, oh, tell me what kind of fitan. What is man makhraju yawma idhin ya Rasul? How do we get out of it? That's all they're concerned about. How do we get out of it? Not, oh, oh, oh. see, now people want to know what the fitna is. Really? So and so did what? So, oh, where? Huh, can you send me the link? No, seriously, this is what people want. They want to find out about the fitna. Imam Ali wanted to find out how to get out of the fitna. Man makhraju yawma idhin ya Rasulullah. Qad kitabullah. Kitabullah. Fihi nabu ma qabrukum wa khabru ma ba'dukum wa hukmu ma baynukum. Huwa al-fasl laysa bil-hazan. Man tarakum min jabbaran qasamu Allah. Wa man abtaha al-huda fi ghayrihi adhalluhu Allah. Il akhir al-hadith. He said, book, the book of Allah, it has everything you need. Everything is in there. Including to follow the sunnah. So don't be like the Prophet said, لَوْ فِيَنَّ أَحَدُكُمْ مُتَّكِيًا عَلَىٰ أَرِيكَتِهِ يَقُولُ مَا وَجِدْنَ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ اتَّبَعْنَا You know, don't be like somebody reclining on his, on his sofa. This is the latter day people. Ah, if, it's in, if it's not in the book of Allah, I'm not going to follow it. And in another riwayah he said, that min asharat al-sa'ah an yatakiya rajulu ala arikatihi yaqulu ma 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 wajadna halalan fi kitab la ahlalna ma wajadna haraman haramna wa la yudhkuru sunnati they won't mention my sunnah wa ma atakum ar-rasul fa khuduhu wa ma nahakum anhu fantahu abd rahman ibn yazid was in 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 during hajj and he saw a man on mahram with a with a cloak over him he said take that off he said ma diriluka they had those people back then. And he said, That's the deal. Take from me your hajj. The hajj isn't in the Quran. It just tells us what nasi hajjul bayt. doesn't tell us how to make hajj. How many tawaf. No. So the first and most fundamental spiritual practice of this religion is prayer. Master your prayer. Don't waste your time with other things. Don't do your mawlid. Don't do all these uh, adhkar and awrad if you're not doing your prayer. If you don't know the ahkam, if you don't know the shurut, if you don't know the sunan, if you don't know the makruhat, if you don't know the muharramat, if you don't know the mubtilat. Don't waste your time. Because that's the first thing you're going to be asked about is your prayer. And then the second single most important thing is Quran. Tilawat al-Quran. Which means beautifully in the Arabic language, to follow talaha and the moon as it follows, right? Because that so it al Quran, but also to recite. Because one word follows another. To recite. So recite the Quran. Tirawat al Quran. The Prophet said the best dhikr is Tirawat al Quran and the best Tirawat al Quran is in the prayer. Abu Dhar said, it's just to, to get up in the morning and learn two ayahs of Quran is better than praying a hundred rakats. Two ayahs of Quran. Tell other people even if it's one hadith. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Alhamdulillah, the tulab al-ilm is a maqam, you know, it's a big maqam to seek knowledge. But all of knowledge in our tradition begins with uh, learning the Arabic language. That's what, if you, knowledge of the deen, there are other things you can learn in other languages. But if you want to learn knowledge of this deen, it begins with learning the Arabic language. And I'm not talking about, you know, the ajam need to learn that, the thing, there's books in Urdu, there's books in Turkish, there's books in Kurdish language, there's books 
in all these uh, Persian, you know, they can learn fundamental. But if you want to really learn this deen, you have to learn Arabic. And, and that's part of what, the reason why you're here, to learn Arabic. It's, 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 it's a sine qua non. That's Latin. You know, it's, it's a condition that you can't do without. إِنْ رُمْتَ يَدْرَكَ الْعُلُومِ بِسُرْعَةً فَعَلَيْكَ بِالنَّحْوِ الْقَوِيمِ وَمَنْتَقِي هذا ميزان العقول مرجحون والنحو يصرح لساني بمنطقي ومن البلاغ ومن البلاغة خد دليلا للحجة تسمو به بين الورى إن تنتقي This our tradition I didn't make it up This is our tradition They said if you want to quickly acquire knowledge then learn good grammar and learn logic Logic will correct your thinking, grammar will correct your speaking, and then learn rhetoric because you'll be able to express yourself amongst the people and uh, be persuasive. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Inna Allahumma malaikatu yusalluna ala nabiyya iwa alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabatihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen. Allah, ya Allah, qala Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, in arhamu ummati bi ummati Abu Bakr, wa ashadduhum fi amri Allahi Umar, wa akfarum hayaan Uthman, wa aqadahum Ali, wa Fatima tu Sayyidatu tu uh, Nisa ahl al-Jannah, والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد رسوله اللهم ارحم العباس اللهم ارحم المبشرين بالجنة اللهم ارحم المسلمين الأحياء منهم ورموات اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يتبعون القول في يستمعون القول في يتبعون أحسن اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يحبون اللغة العربية You know, I wanted to mention one thing to all of you learning Arabic. Make the intention to preserve the language of this deen as a fard kifaya. You know, get, get the reward of fard kifaya, learning Arabic. And I'll tell you a true story. I, I studied very briefly with somebody. I learned a lot from him, but I lived in his house in Medina. He's an amazing Mauritanian man. Who's what? Who, his mother was there at the time, Sadika. She actually fasted every other day for decades. She just recited Qur'an constantly. That was her ibadah, was recitation of Qur'an. She was an amazing lady and lived in the total zahida for dunya. And I'm glad I met her. Um, and, uh, but she had two sons. One of them is a Usuri scholar who uh, became Sheikh Abdullahi Shinqilti, uh, who teaches uh, in, uh, in Medina. But the other one was a, uh, a muhasib. He, he was an accountant. His name was Muhammad Ahid. And when I was living with him, we used to walk, he, five prayers a day, he would walk to the masjid from al Harar Gharbiya. This was the area the Mauritanians lived in in Medina when I lived there. And uh, we would walk the five prayers and we would pray and walk back. He would recite the al of Ibn Malik on the way and on the way back. And I asked him once why he did that. He said, it's my word. This is my word. Like this is my ibadah. And I said to him, You know, can, how is that ibadah? He said, because my niyyah is to preserve the language of the Qur'an. And so this is my devotional practice. About five years ago, I went back to Medina and I saw Sheikh Abdullah and I asked him, how's Muhammad Ahid? He said, you'll never believe what he's doing now. I said, what? He has the kursi and nahu in the haram and nabawi. He was an accountant. And he said, I don't think there's anybody more learned in grammar in this city. So make a strong niya. You know, we need people, young people, that don't waste their lives. TikTok, is, it'll take your life. It'll eat your life. Really, just keep scrolling. Some idiot. You know, like the, you know, the rats, they keep hitting to get the pellet. Oh, there's an interesting one. Oh, I think I'll tweet it out and waste other people's time. اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وتبع علينا إنك أنت توب رحيم الحمد لله